All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Uh, we're just um, waiting for a few folks to join us, and we're going to get rolling. Hey, there's rain in our area, and where Pastor Paul is, there is ice on the ground, and uh, so we're trusting this will not give us any internet disruptions. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter how much internet I'm running over 200 megabits per second. And, uh, sometimes even bad weather can interfere with that. So, uh, good morning, Pastor Paul. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good to see you, Dr. Bill. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I'm glad you were able to spend these past couple of weeks with me. Um, we've been talking a little bit about uh, your new book, Notes from Papa, um, a 365-day uh, devotional book uh, av available on Amazon.com, and I have posted the link um, prior to, this sh to uh, the, the show here, but I'm going to do that again just so it will be in the chat room. Uh, good morning, Tenderheart. Uh, good to see you. And um, so let me uh, grab this um, link before we get started, because we're going to take a little bit different slant on this today, but it's going to be fun. And um, we're going to be talking about something that, you know, there's it's just one of those subjects that some people don't like to talk about. But uh, I, I'm game for about anything, you know. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, tell tell us just to, uh, just to start with, while people are still joining us, a little bit about uh, uh, notes from Papa, and we'll uh, get into the lesson after that. Well, thanks for having me on again, Bill. It's it's always a pleasure, always good to be with you, and I appreciate you asking me about uh, notes from Papa. Uh, starting a few years ago, uh, I well several years ago. I would hear things from the Lord speaking to me, uh, you know, in my spirit and inside. And uh, I would write them down and keep them in sort of a loose leaf journal. And then uh, three or four years ago, I started journaling a little more and writing down, you know, virtually a page or two of, of notes of things that I, I would hear from. I call him Papa. He, we can call him Jesus or Yahweh or Holy Spirit or whatever we want. Um, yeah. At least that's my understanding. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so I started writing these things down. And uh, but I, over the course of time, I had about 500 of them. And then I would uh, I would occasionally uh, put one online. And I had several friends say, Paul, why don't you put those into a devotional book? And mm -hmm. so I, you know, I thought about that. And it, and it took me a while to do that, to called them out to change it, to make, make it so it was uh, appropriate for men or women, young or old, <clears throat> you know, uh, that type of thing. And, <clears throat> and some edits, some things. And then uh, I worked on it quite a bit last year. And so it came out uh, before Christmas. It, it is a, an everyday uh, devotional. These are things that I heard from Papa. I kind of got this idea from uh, Sarah Young and her devotional book, Jesus Calling, which, uh, my wife, Kitsy, and I read several times, and then we gave away copies of that to lots of different people. And these are just things that, that they're all encouraging. There's never any condemnation, any shame, any guilt. It's always affirmations, always talks about God's unconditional love and grace uh, for everyone. And uh, it's since this is where I've uh, been coming from and coming through it you know it's all from a perspective of of jesus finished work at the cross uh god's love for everyone god's inclusion right. for everyone so when you when you get this book and read this you'll know that uh you're never gonna you're always gonna feel better after you read these each day uh, you're always gonna be encouraged uh hopefully you're gonna come closer to uh, you can't get any closer to god because he's in you right. already but you're going to uh have a, a deeper sense of his love for you and for everyone and the goal of the book is twofold one for people to be encouraged by the truth of uh, uh, the only true God who Jesus comes much better I, I'm convinced that we all have this deep innate hard wiring by God to want to hear from him relate to him be in community with him and many of us just don't know that uh, and this is this is to encourage and help people everybody to start hearing from God themselves 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, uh, Pastor Paul, in conjunction with that, as we get started this morning, uh, you know, John says in John uh, 1, I think it's verse 3, uh, John says that the life of, of the word, which is talking about the eternal Christ there, uh, who has always been and always will be. And he says that the life of God is the light of men. Or we could say that the life of God is the illumination inside of men. And so mankind as a whole cannot uh, ever get away from God, is divinely and eternally connected to God because uh, that life and that illumination of God exists in his creation uh, because it's not that we are um, uh, faith. I always say it this way. It's not that we are face to face with God uh, in the sense of uh, like you and I are looking at each other today, but it's it's an it, a, a, a intertwining as one. And that's the revelation Jesus came to to give. We talk about he come to give salvation to the whole world, to save the whole world. But what he really came to do was to enlighten or awaken the whole world to the light yeah. of God or the life of God that is in them. So uh, get your yeah. copy yeah. of uh of this book uh notes from papa it's posted there in the chat room it's also on my timeline um and tagged to my other timeline and so uh you'll want to get your a copy of that as soon as you can now uh we've been talking about only one and uh, uh of course we started talking about this from uh january 2nd's devotional lesson in your book but uh, I want to take it a step further today. We we want to go and talk about something today that some people are not comfortable talking about, but also some people are not comfortable hearing about. And, you know, uh, uh, and that is if we're truly one with God, then what about this thing of eternal punishment? So I want to start off this morning with a few questions, and then we're going to let Pastor Paul talk about this uh, from... Uh, his perspective and uh, which I'm sure is very much my perspective and we've got a lot of notes this morning a lot of things we could talk about we can define the, the the Greek words for hell and so on but what about this thing of eternal punishment so here's the question we want to ask the audience today what do you think what do you really think about why someone would be so adamant even to the point of being angry that there has to be a hell of eternal torment yet only the elect can escape it Another question, what uh, what does uh, does that kind of make you think that God might be against some of his creation and not toward others? Another question, if God really is a respecter of persons in that he loves those who have been deemed good enough to be his elect, but actually hates those who are selected to be damned forever, then does God really love the whole world? After all, we know John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world or the whole world. Um, uh, how would you feel, and this is something for people to think about, how would you feel if you found out that Judas, who betrayed Jesus, was actually in heaven. And of course we can define heaven. We can talk about that. But uh, why do people seem to think that this means that people are going to hell as if uh, uh, you take someone who's never really done a mean thing in their life, but they just didn't do the traditional thing, pray that particular prayer and you know get right with God in that way. Uh, Pastor Paul, why are some going to hell and others are not? Uh well, ever nobody's going to hell. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I knew that's what you were going to say. <laughs> uh, those are all great questions, Bill, and I, you know, I'm, I want to address well all of them if if we can get to them. But uh, yes, uh, just um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not sure really where to start. But I, I remember as a pastor, like 30 years ago, you know, I I taught about hell, and one of my favorite lines was. Hell is a real place and real people go there for a real long time. And I was wrong about yeah. all three of those things. But the reason I taught that was because that's what I'd been taught. Of course. And I never questioned it. I just, I never questioned it. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of times I just didn't want to think about it. And I think, I think many, many pastors and teachers 
don't want to think about it. And we don't want to teach about it. We're uncomfortable with that. And we ought to be uncomfortable with that concept because we know that God is love. We know that God loves everyone. We know his loving kindness lasts forever. We know that love never fails. We know that we can never be separated from God's love. I mean, we know all of those things. So right. even, even the, you know, just the thought or the concept of being a place where God could, uh, uh, put people in eternal conscious torment. And then even as some uh, hellish doctrines say, take, uh, take delight in that and God get glory from that. I mean, it, it just, it makes no sense at all. There's this, there's this, uh, 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 oh, I can't think of the word of it right now, but the, the, there's a, a conflict um, in our mind. So we, we just don't like to think about that. And some of us, though, and, and I've been there, uh, some of us, because we've been taught that and we bought into it and we spent so much time uh, in that uh, in that circle, in that mindset, mm -hmm. we don't like it when we hear that somebody says that might not be true because really what that means is we've been duped. We've, we've, we were... And we're really, we're, we're being challenged when somebody says, you know, there's no hell. Well, we can go, well, there has to be because I believe it. And that's what so-and-so taught who discipled me and all that kind of stuff. And then there's a third reason. And, and this may be, may be the worst of all. And I'm, uh, I don't even like to think about it. But many of us think, well, so-and-so deserves to go to hell because yeah. uh, we think they should go to hell because of their lifestyle or sexual preference or beliefs or whatever. And we tend to create God in our own image and think, well, if we think they should go to hell and be tortured forever, then surely God feels the same way. And that's, that's projecting ourselves onto God. I think, what is the word for that? Is it theosis or something like that? And uh, th that's, uh, that's creating God in our image, which is, you know, it really should be the other way around. Right. You know, and, you know, it's unfortunate. I was raised that way also. Uh, I was firmly raised to believe in hell. And um, uh, because after all, the word hell is mentioned in our Bibles. And I, I came up in the, the King James Version. And while many other translations still use the word hell, uh, still, uh, you, you know what someone says in the chat room? They said that, that hell is when we believe in separation. And they said, I lived there. It was hell. And when you believe you're separated from God or can be separated from God, which is still a separation mindset, that does present uh, a, a degree of, uh, of conscious torment. Uh, so that is the problem, Pastor Paul, that eternal hell does not exist. Now, the word hell does exist, but uh, the reality is, is there's been a huge uh, misinterpretation of first century words or, and prior that um, we just were not taught coming up in uh, church circles. So, you know, the every evil person in history, when you think about this, it doesn't matter who they are, if it's uh, people like Genghis Khan or mm -hmm. Hitler or Judas or you name the person, every uh, person deemed to be an evil person in history that's had some type of actions or deeds connected to their philosophies um, um, at this moment live in the spirit realm. Um, and that's where we are connected also. We're more spirit than we are uh, natural. The natural is just an awareness. It's just a sensory realm awareness. But, you know, one of the things, Pastor Paul, is that uh, when we go through tremendous hardship in life uh, to any degree, that is a hell. Uh, when you believe that God is not there, which is a separation mindset, that is a hell. When you believe you are of Adam and you have to suffer and you will go through things because God's mad at you, God rejects you for any reason at all, that is a hell in itself. And so we, as we talked last week, it's not a matter of the... Um, uh, it, it's not a matter of God being mad at us. The fact is we're one with God. Every cre every person, this is what I love about World Bible School, and I know we're not talking about World Bible School today, is that I just don't teach our students 
any degree of separation from God whatsoever. We are eternally created as one with God from before the foundation of the world. But people really do operate out of this mistaken identity uh, about hell, and it really is a false identity problem. Talk to us some more. It is. And there's a there's a very good reason not to teach separation. Mm -hmm. very, very good reason not to teach separation because there is no separation. <laughs> Total illusion. Exactly. Uh, I'm not anti religion. I'm not anti-church. I'm anti. I'm anti what organized bondage, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally. You know that the people that taught me about hell were wonderful, good people who loved the Lord sincerely, wanted to serve Him, wanted to do what was right. I don't. I don't think there was a single one of them that ever uh, intentionally tried to mislead me. They were just taught what they had been taught before and what they'd come to believe by the system. But one of the things that, uh, that the Lord is really impressing on me, Dr. Bill, is that uh, experience, a, a personal experience with God, hearing from God ourselves, being healed ourselves, seeing seeing something uh, actually happen ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here uh, always trumps intellectual knowledge. And I think we talked a little bit about this last week. You know, once the Lord is spoken to you and showed you something uh, and you've caught it and you've got it inside as they can quote or how many you know 16th century leaders or whatever they can quote yeah they're not going to be able to dance and i want to take just a moment to relate it and an experience that i had uh, I one of my books uh, uh, is called, and there's uh, a picture of me, um, my convertible, uh, a 2000 Pontiac G6 hardtop convertible. Going into the reason for the name convertible, and one of the stuff it's seven, almost uninterrupted convertible. Went a lot of fun. But unfortunately, it damaged to the skin on my face. And I, I've had over 200 places on my face frozen off or uh, cut out that excised kind of stuff. I, I, and some of them, most of them have been in cancerous. Some have been cancerous. Uh, I have to, uh, now I have the time they called called blue B L U hyphen the capital letter U blue U, and it's a fairly new protocol. And what they do is uh, you go in to it early in the morning, and be there at seven thirty, and a, a, a medical technician covers. Your face very, very meticulously. This compound sort of a cream all over your face. Uh, sets for the first time I went. Uh, it sets on there for two hours. It sort of goes to your. It's extremely painful. Then at the end of that two-hour time, you go to a thing that has uh, eight fluorescent light bulbs. You head into this sort of apparatus with eight. You shot for light bulbs. Set at the, uh, I mean, you talked about the, uh, how much computer power, internet power you got. These lights are bright as they can possibly be without killing you. And you sat in that for 17 minutes. And they beforehand, they said, it, it's going to be pain like you never imagined before. And we said, a lot of people aren't able to withstand this. If you can't stand the pain, tell us that we'll stop it and we'll not do it, even though it's really good for you and it it takes away all of these precancerous things so i'm sitting there inside of this thing since my son is is the 
physician assistant there, I, I've just determined, well, I'm be tough. You know, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to say I can't take it. I get right. into that thing, Dr. Bill, and it, now, I never had a baby, obviously, and I understand that's the excruciating pain. So I, I've never had anything to compare to this. But the pain, not asking for sympathy the year the pain was absolutely unbearable i did this tuesday it's a two-part process the pain is just unbearable yeah and it hurts just excruciating i'm there the first time i'm sitting in that I can hardly stand it. And so oh, I thought, well, I practice what I pre <laughs> and didn't ask to take it away from me. I said, Pop, show me what you want me to do. And I was not audible, but I heard him in my spirit placing Paul, this heat and the pain. I don't know, Paul. I heard ever do any like this in of my children anyone is my we never even think of doing this by what a parent and we've had an experience like that and you know you're hearing from God and I, I mean that wouldn't be an evil <laughs> spirit telling you that well you know once you've once you've heard from God I'd in a, in a situation like that, nobody can take that away from you. Uh, you know, somebody can quote you, you uh, King James scripture that you, right. this is the word hell, that's not a good translation from the original word, whether it was she, or Hades, or Thomas. But nobody can consider otherwise. And so that's, that's one of my great hopes will be able to hear from God, hear from the only his love, and know what uh, John tells us in 1 John 4, perfect love, as to up all fear, because fear right. to do with punishment or torment. And we don't have to worry at here quote, day of judgment, unquote, because perfect love has cast out all fear. And everyone can grasp that not afraid ever of God. Right. Can't reach it. Right. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to ask you to refresh your screen. If you click the tab at the top, right click, and then click refresh. Uh, because uh, or reload because uh, we're having a lot of breaking up due to the ice and that may help. Uh, so while Pastor Paul is doing that, uh, let me just say a couple of things regarding what he is sharing. Uh, one is uh, when it when we talk about spirits and you mentioned, you know, this was not words from a false spirit or an evil spirit. The word spirits actually can be traced out to mean uh, mindsets. And so where does uh, these supposed false mindsets come from? Uh, they are voices within our unrenewed soul. So really they come from thoughts of separation or, or from mistaken identity. The other thing I would say is, is that when we talk about hell and, you know, Pastor Paul, we've all gone through experiences uh, in life that uh, have the, the, uh, uh, the feeling of being like hell. And I've heard some people say that uh, uh, the only hell you're going to go through is the hell you go through in life. That's because um, every false mindset can be like hell uh, because it's projected from a separation mindset. But I would tell you, uh, everybody this, that every single word in the Bible, whether you look in the King James, New King James or whatever translation, uh, every a word connected to hell, uh, 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 Gehenna, uh, Hadas, uh, Hades, many people call it. It's Hadas in the Greek, um, uh, whether it's Tartarus, 
uh, or whatever it is, Sheol, they are connected to Greek mythology. Uh, we know that if you watch Zeus or you watch uh, Hercules uh, or, or uh, those uh, uh, Norse uh, Viking mythological gods, uh, they're not real. Uh, they are mythological creations of the mind. And every word I've ever found that has to do with any form of eternal punishment in the English language right. all stem from Greek mythology. And I will tell you that there is a place outside of Jerusalem that is what we would know today if you have ever taken trash to the dump before uh, that this garbage heap outside of Jerusalem was a place where their body bodies were burned. Uh, sometimes there was human sacrifices to false gods of the Old Testament uh, in this place, but it was literally a place where people burned their garbage, discarded their dead bodies. And somehow somebody came up with the idea that because we translated that from the Greek to the English, that this place was hell where people are going to spend eternity uh, eternity in now if you burn anything in a garbage heap it is basically there to the point of disintegration for eternity unless bulldozers come in and they clean up all that garbage and they bury that whatever the case the point is is that we have had a completely false concept of what hell is so uh, as Pastor Paul was describing, we missed some of that, Pastor, because of the internet. But uh, but I, I would think about you know some of the the things that I have uh, dealt with in my life uh, physically uh, that had uh, suffering and torment attached to them. Uh, that would be like hell. Uh, now here's why people are not going to go to hell. Um, if, if there was a hell, and since there's not in terms of a literal eternal place, <laughs> uh, it's because God abides in all of his creation. And, and that means that in the spirit realm, uh, because ev actually everything is spirit, even what you see in the natural, uh, you see the physical body uh, made up of 90% uh, of, of, of atoms, um, and atoms break down into um, uh, energy, and there's over 50 trillion uh, energy cells in your body, and all of that is spirit. Now science is connecting energy and spirit as one. So uh, everything that there is manifests in the visible realm out of spirit. And so that means you and I are connected together. Uh, so it, Pastor Paul, even if I was to say, uh, I am 100% right about everything I teach, but if someone else doesn't believe in God or they actually teach in hell, then they are not uh, of the elect, therefore they're gonna go to hell. That would be incorrect because that is out of mistaken identity. And after all, let's face it, the word uh, he uh, heaven is actually uh, ordinas in the Greek, and it actually, when you trace it down to what it probably really believes, would be the abode of, abode of God. So where's the abode of God? Hey, in me, in you, around us, every uh, person of creation. Uh, so there is no scriptural way to actually, in the original language, prove the validity of any type of an eternal torment for anybody. No, there's not. And, you know, Bill, in, in the World Bible School, I know that you teach you teach people how to think uh, for themselves, how to research, how to how to uh, uh, connect with God, and how to find out original words from Scripture and, and all, all of those different things. And. One of the things that uh, traditionally many of us have been, I remember the time when I, I just would emphatically say God is everywhere present. You know, and, I, and I'd go to Psalm 139 and, and I believe that God is everywhere present. And in the next breath, I would teach, well, well <laughs> <laughs> those, those, there's a cognitive dissonance there. That's the, the word I was looking for before. If God is everywhere present, 
dang, uh, you can't be separated from God. And of course, David uh, stated that so well in Psalm 139. So if we just w would think about some of the things that uh, we've taught and, ex and accepted without ever questioning, we'd go, oh, no, wait a minute. They, they can't both be true, can they? Uh, and they can't both be true. God is God is everywhere present. God is in all of us through all of those trillions of, of um, cells and what, whatever yeah. that, uh, that they are, um, actins, and you know the the abode of God is everywhere. So we can be uh, apart from Him. Yeah, yeah, and you know David said. If I make my belly in hell, uh, you are there. Um, that word there, I believe, was the word Sheol, which uh, that word originated in a hundred and in the one ninety. That's coming up to me. Yeah, uh, and from the Hebrew, literally means the underworld or Hades or Hadas. Uh, the word is of an unknown origin, which once again. Really? is steeped in Greek mythology. Uh, so, you know, David was just using an expression that if I make my bed anywhere that's totally out of uh, whatever the scope of God might be, guess what? God is still there. And I, I think it's so awesome for David to make a statement like that in the book of Psalms. Uh, what about when Luke 16, Well, it is. And, and, you know, of course, David was a man after God's yeah. own heart. It, David, it, there's no question in my mind. Well, Luke, Luke 16, 23, the King James says, and in hell he... Uh, lifted up his eyes, being in torments, mm -hmm. and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Uh, well, as we've mentioned before, uh, when when Jesus said that, uh, it was a parable. First of all, it, it was a, uh, an analogy. It, it was a story to illustrate a point. Still appear in, in some translations, um, and uh, it. Uh, it does come from Greek mythology, not from God. And he's using that in, in that particular parable, as in all of his parables, he, he's using the story to illustrate a much greater point. And, uh, you know, if, if we just look at that as face value with the dead letter, uh, and we think that that's hell, but we think that Lazarus was in heaven, but yet, Lazarus could talk back and forth to um, the the guy who was uh, uh, in uh, in hell. Well, that goes against what we've all been taught about hell. Uh, you know that that they're they're not connected. That you can't communicate one from the other. So, I mean, there are just so many things that break down when you really start to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, one of the problems. Uh, and I'll say this for the sake of everybody watching today. One of the problems with theological interpretation is we look for the uh, printer's headings uh, that may or may not be present a, a truth about the scriptures that follow. Now, uh, this whole section of scripture in Luke 16 is surrounded by parables. Uh, and and what people have a problem with from a theological position is that the story of the rich man and Lazarus does not say this is a parable. But when it comes to theological interpretation, again, all of these passages are surrounded by parables, and Jesus is just using, as you said, stories. They're illustrations to make a point. There was no literal uh, hell. There was no literal uh, Abraham's bosom per se, or Lazarus, uh, that, that was just a story that Jesus used. This was not the Lazarus that Jesus uh, rose from the dead and called forth from the grave. Uh, this was just, uh, you, you might say, made up names 
that presented a story. So it was not literal. Um, and, and, you know, it is it is terrible, Pastor Paul, that because of all of the preaching that's been done over the years, now there's this false image, this false concept of hell in people's mind. But here's another thing we need to know. The word hell is a generic English word. You know what generic is? If you buy a generic tool, a generic brand tool, uh, chances are one or two times the tool is going to be broken or worn out. You're going to have to replace it very soon. Um, and so generic is just not the, the genuine article. And that's what the word in the English language is. It's, a, it's, a, it's not the genuine article. It's just a word that was chosen to try to make a point because they didn't really know how to convey that point. And I'll be honest with you, Pastor Paul, when we come to the first century uh, and we look at what the language is and could have been, uh, the thing is, is that James Strong's that we lean on so heavily didn't write the Strong's Concordance till 1890 or 91. So some of his interpretation was not exactly accurate, uh, especially when we put it up against the true nature of God. And that's what I do teach, that we really need to have the appropriate proper hermeneutical lens or interpretive lens when we're trying to interpret what we read in our English Bibles, which the proper interpretive lens is God's love. You, you, you mean Strong's is, is not the uh, 68th book of the Bible? <laughs> Or the 70th, whatever, how many books strong is not the inspired and errant infallible word of God. <laughs> no, he, I, I didn't agree I with that, him on But I was certainly taught that anything is in, yeah, anything I was taught, anything that's in Strong's is, boy, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You know, you can't question Strong's. <laughs> <laughs> forgive forgive my laughter but it, it, it's it's really the way we've been taught to take the bible for everything that it is and not to question anything and and, and you know we have the strongs we have thayers um we have uh, all of those things and uh, yeah. hell hell is a made up or yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, Pastor Paul had to go out at the moment. His um, uh, and he'll be back, um, I'm sure. Um, just really ice storms in his area and really a tremendous freezing. I, I happen to be uh, blessed with over 200 megabytes of uh, per second of internet, and um, we do this because of our continuous broadcasts. But uh, but let, let me just say this that that it, not only is the word hell a generic English word, uh, but uh, uh, the words in your Bible indicating an eternal place of torment all originated once again out of Greek mythology, not from God. And the reason I think some would go to hell uh, or some people think that and others will not is because of misguided teachings over the years. And, you know, I'm as guilty as anyone else. I have taught uh, those um I have taught uh, those things in the past myself. Uh, Dr. Faye says history is awesome about the lake of fire. It refers to when the temple of Jerusalem was burned down by Roman soldiers and so many died that their blood went through uh, uh, a, a, a place that they called a lake of fire. Um, uh, a, a great historian told that. Uh, Pastor Paul, welcome back. Uh, he's uh, uh, coming up on the screen now. Welcome back. Um, uh, I'm sorry for your ice storms uh, in your area, but um, uh, it, anyway, yeah, yeah, you can't can't help the the weather sometimes. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, Dr. Faye brought up an interesting point, 
And that was about the lake of fire. So, you know, the scripture in the book of Revelation says that the false prophets and the, 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 the beast and, and hell will all be cast into the lake of fire, which burns uh, uh, with fire and brimstone, which burns forever. Uh, the thing is that, um, uh, yeah, and someone just said, I believe that lake of fire is my father, all consuming fire. Uh, really, that's so true because God is an all consuming fire. Uh, when we look at the word um, wrath, for example, in the book of Revelation. Now, first of all, the book of Revelation is a completely a symbolic book. It's a symbolic language that John used as he described what he was hearing from the Lord. But uh, but in this symbolism, uh, the word wrath that we believe that we're subject to the wrath of God, the word wrath actually is incorrectly translated. It's the uh, word meaning passion. And, and what the Greek implies is that God's uh, consuming uh, passionate fire of love burns everything out of us that doesn't belong. And so I'm so grateful for that. And the lake of fire, uh, Josephus said that when uh, Jerusalem was burning, uh, there were 6,000 people in the temple, plus the war that was going on in the, uh, the city yard. Uh, and so there was thousands and thousands of people who died in that uh, destruction of the city of Jerusalem. And you know what? Uh, the blood of those people ran through the streets for days and possibly weeks, which ultimately quenched the fire. And Josephus referred to that as the lake of fire. Uh, so, you know, folks, there's not a lake of fire where you're going to be burned up. And there's not a hell where you're going to uh, go to or your loved ones are going to go to. Uh, you know, uh, what's going to happen is when you, if you exit this natural realm of awareness, uh, the, the thing that you will see will be the spirit realm and, and the billions and billions of spirit beings uh, with the Lord that are connected as one uh, being, one body in him, the one man, Christ Jesus. Uh, there, there is no place of eternal torment. Pastor Paul, it just does not exist. Are you there? No, it doesn't. And uh, I want everybody to know as um, people are people are afraid uh, of what's going to happen. You know, when they when they die physically. This, uh, you know that again, perfect love cast out all of that fear yeah. and that's what i want for everyone that that i know and everyone that uh that hears us and, and i i, I um, you no know, need to be afraid of hell yeah yeah, absolutely no need. And conversely, you know, I want to focus on I want on the opposite, which is uh, which is with uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit living in their power. Things that we've yeah. been talking about. Um, but uh, I I can tend to dwell on that, to, and and is real abundant life yes let me um let me bring this to this point this morning that when we look at john three sixteen that says for god so loved the world i i have learned to uh to translate or to not translate but interpret scripture as i go and every time i see the world world uh the word world i always put the whole world uh, the scripture says that God was in Christ reconciling the whole world to himself. If you read that in other translations and you try to make sense out of what that really means, what it means is, is that, that God sent Jesus to reconnect humankind 
to the mind of God. Now, for God to reconnect us or to reconcile us would mean that we had to have first been connected to his mind. And like Dr. K. Fairchild teaches that when we came into this realm of, 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 of the senses and, and all of the religion and things that were taught to us in our youth, uh, we had a experienced a type of amnesia and we had a took on a separation mindset and was in a way disconnected with from God. Now the scriptures say Paul taught this said that you were you were separated from God in your own minds. Um, and so it's only in the thoughts of mankind that we experience a separation. So I would just say this that the reason Jesus came, was not to die for your sins or to become sin for you. He became the sacrifice for sin, which is better interpreted that way. Uh, but I would say this, that um, uh, that that uh, the word sin uh, really does come from the Greek word hamartia, a compound word, which means uh, mistaken identity. And so Jesus came to pay for or to sacrifice his life for the mistaken identity of others so that they might reconnect God on the plane of truth. Uh, Apostle Jimmy, uh, Dr. Jimmy Lewis says death and hell uh, is not the lake of fire. The, uh, the, the lake uh, burned up, death and hell were burned up. Paul said fire will uh, save uh, that will save us as by fire. And so it's this consuming fire of God's love. Now you've been quoting um, uh, perfect love casts out fear. You know, Pastor Paul, I also was raised to believe that I had to love better when I didn't love enough so that my love could become perfected. It was never about our love. It was always about his love, his perfect love. When we get a revelation of that always removes fear uh, that we've lived by. Um, because we're having so many internet issues today, uh, if there's a closing word you'd like to give to kind of wrap this up, um, do that and uh, we'll, uh, we'll move toward an end today. We're not hearing you. Um, well, again, thank, thank you so much for having me on. And I know the, the internet stuff is a, uh, wreaked havoc with this and uh, uh nothing we yeah i don't know if i, I don't know if you can i i'm sorry yeah, about I the you. internet stuff i just want everybody to know how much god loves them i'm so appreciative of what you and dr Fay do in the world bible school and uh how, how how you're reaching people and helping people uh and a big part of letting them know who they are in christ their identity who they've always been who they are now who they always will be god's yeah. great love for them and for everyone for the entire as you said before past present and future yeah. uh, when we focus on that uh then we're, we're able to experience what we already have full of life of another kind and it's just wonderful amen amen and it's so good to know that god loves us unconditionally it's so good to know that uh he is not about eternal torment and i'm so glad that we talked about this today uh i have posted the link to pastor paul's new book again it's not his only book but it's his new book uh, called Notes from Papa. Uh, it's a 365-day uh, devotional. And one of the things I love about this book, right on the cover, uh, it not only says Notes from Papa, but it says Your Daily Devotional. So there you go. If you want to pick a daily devotional that will encourage you and uh, uh, be uplifting and not uh, condescending or filled with condemnation, uh, get your copy on the link there at Amazon.com. Uh, by Paul Gray, Notes from Papa. Pastor Paul, it's been such a joy and an honor to have you on the show today. Uh, I'm sorry for the ice storms that you're experiencing there. Uh, I hope the weather is true here, that all we're going to have is rain. But um, thank you so much for being on today with me, my brother. Me too. Um, 
Okay, so uh, I, I'm not getting anything from your mic there. So uh, kind of thank you, Dr. Bill. Yes, you and Dr. Uh, all our listeners. Amen. Amen. Uh, just blessings to all of you. Yes. And thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. And, and you know what? The thing, Pastor, about uh, uh, the internet, it, it, <laughs> internet problem. Yeah, we can always do this again. That's the beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for being on. And to everybody watching today, uh, uh, if you'll watch this, I know that you can, uh, uh, through the disruption, yeah. you can get what needs Good. to be got. And um, so notes from Papa, Pastor Paul Gray, 365 day devotional. God bless you. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. This is our last broadcast for the week, unless we do an impromptu broadcast over the weekend. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. You too.